Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. Normally, I'm talking about the art business and the gallery scene. Today, though, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a book review, completely unrelated, or at least mostly unrelated to the art world. I'm Jason Horsch, owner of Xanadu Gallery in Scottsdale, Arizona, and publisher of Red Dot Blog. And today, I'm reviewing Keep Sharp, Build a Better Brain at Any Age by Dr. Sanjay Gupta. Now, why? Why did I read this book? Why am I reviewing it? I am quickly approaching a significant birthday. I've got a lot of gray in my hair at this point. And over the last few years, I've had a couple of medical hiccups and suddenly mortality is starting to seem pretty real. So I tried to live a fairly healthy lifestyle. I started running in my early 20s and have been very consistent about getting out and pounding the pavement. My wife, Carrie, is a bit of a nutrition nut, and so she's made sure that uh, we eat fairly healthily, have a good diet. But these last few years have given me pause and helped me realize that there's probably even more that I can be doing. And so while I normally like to read from history and especially art history, uh, I love literature. I'm reading Middlemarch by George Eliot for the first time right now, but I've decided that I've got to put a little bit of science and health into the mix. And that led me to read Dr. Gupta's book. Now, if you're not familiar with Dr. Gupta, he is a fairly prominent neurosurgeon and he is the chief medical correspondent for CNN. Dr. Gupta shares in the book that part of what led him to become a neurosurgeon was watching some of his close family members experience mental decline over the years. And so in this book, he's setting out to debunk some of the myths about memory and mental health and he's offering some advice about what each of us can do to improve our mental acuity as we age to help stave off or at least delay memory loss. And so I thought that seemed like a pretty good topic for me to dive into. And I'll mention this is somewhat personal to me. I watched my own grandmother who suffered with Alzheimer's slowly lose memories of her family and friends and eventually uh, it took her life. And so um, reading this book was a, a bit of a revelation to me. I thought, as I'm sure many people do, that dementia and Alzheimer's are mostly hereditary and that if you are fated to suffer from them, there's not really much you can do. But Dr. Gupta argues that this is not really the case. In Keep Sharp, he proposes that mental decline is about 10% heredity and about 90% lifestyle. I'll admit I was a little skeptical of this claim, but he goes on to speak from his extensive research and his experience in his medical practice. And he makes some very compelling arguments that we should be doing more to build our mental acuity and to stave off the mental decline. And he offers some very practical advice on how to do that. And so what is his advice? He has five key areas that he focuses on. Nothing is particularly shocking or revelatory. I think they're things that we have all heard, but sometimes it's good to be reminded of things we already know and to recommit to them. And so his five areas of focus are exercise, engagement, sleep, nutrition, and social connections. Really nothing shocking, right? Those are things that we've all been hearing and the research is pretty clear on all of them. But I think what I didn't realize was how much those things would have an effect on my brain. A lot of these, you think about your physical health and not necessarily the impact that it's going to have on your memory or your ability to reason and to navigate the world. And so from those things, a few things that uh, really resonated with me. The first one was exercise, as I mentioned. I am fairly active, but his suggestion is that we should all be looking for 150 minutes a week of dedicated exercise time. He says it's good to just get started with anything to get up and move more. We all know there is an epidemic of inactivity in modern society. And so even just a little bit of movement is a great start, but ultimately we should be aiming for those 150 minutes of dedicated exercise. So that could be 30 minutes, five days a week. Um, it is best to spread it out a bit. And we should be mixing in some other exercise um, besides just walking or jogging, swimming, training intervals, 
Weightlifting and resistance is important, but that activity is the one thing you can do that's going to have the most impact on both your physical and mental health. He also suggests that we should stay mentally engaged, keeping our brains active and challenged. One of the things that he suggested is that working longer is better. He's not a big fan of early retirement. Uh, although there are other things you can be doing, can, uh, ongoing education and learning, finding hobbies that challenge you. And so for my audience, mostly of artists, you may have a bit of a leg up here where your engagement in your art is a great way to stay mentally challenged and active. He also suggests that uh, we should eat for our brain, that we should be eating in a way that's going to be healthy for our brain. And so he is a big fan of the Mediterranean diet. That is focusing on leafy greens, berries, fish, and nuts. But we should also be cutting back on added sugars and processed foods. This is the one that is probably the biggest area that I need to work on. Again, even though we try to eat healthily in our home, I have some weaknesses for sweets and processed foods. And so this is definitely one that I will be focusing on as I make more of an effort to, to be healthy. Staying connected is another big and important area. Staying in touch with friends and family. The, the research has shown, according to Dr. Gupta, that social connections are one of the leading indicators of how healthy we'll be in our later life. And he, he suggests that uh, we can make connections in the real world, but that also there are some opportunities to make connections online and through social media that can be positive. I think there's probably some trade-offs there, but ultimately it is important to have those connections and this is one where I suspect that perhaps many artists struggle, that it is very easy to get locked away in, in your studio and not have as many social connections as you might otherwise have. But there are also a lot of opportunities there as we think about art shows and, and engagement with the artist community. Another priority should be sleep. Again, an area that I have struggled with over the years. Um, not rocket science, but uh, Dr. Gupta suggests we should be working towards a very regimented sleep routine where we are targeting to go to bed at the same time every night and to get up at the same time every day, including weekends. And that might co come into conflict with some of our social interests, but that the more regimented we can be, the better our sleep is gonna be. And for brain health, boy, uh, according to his research and the science, PET scans and everything, um, so much important activity is happening in the brain at night while we are sleeping. Important, we should try to manage stress. And so Dr. Gupta suggests practicing mindfulness, spending time in nature, unplugging from our digital world and devices. That was another one uh, he suggested that would help us with sleep, but it also carries over into managing stress. Volunteering is another great way to create social engagement and to de-stress. There is nothing that can help you get away from your own problems and challenges like reaching out to help other people overcome theirs. And so reaching out and volunteering in the community can be very powerful. I've been trying to do that and am committed to do even more of that as my uh, busy schedule. I was about to say as my busy schedule permits, but Dr. Gupta's argument is you better make these things happen. It better be a priority if you want to experience increased brain health. And then finally, uh, Dr. Gupta advocates gratitude and laughter. Uh, laughter is a great medicine and focusing on the things that you have to be grateful for in life. Again, Again, has been scientifically proven to have a big impact on your long-term health. Now, obviously, there was a lot more detail in the advice offered in the book, but I really appreciated Dr. Gupta's clear, positive style of writing. He offers a last portion of the book, a 12-week program that you can follow to start moving step-by-step -step towards better brain health. I'll admit that there are a lot of self-improvement books that I will tend to kind of skim over parts that are interesting and parts that are less interesting. I actually found this book to be very readable. 
even as he's talking about the science and the research, he does it in a very humane way and brings in interesting anecdotes. Uh, and it was a quick read. I think I read the, the entire book in a little less than a week. And so if you're interested in improving your brain health and your mental acuity, this should be a book that you at least consider adding to your reading list. And I'm curious, what are you doing to uh, help you improve your memory and your mental acuity? Uh, what have you found to be particularly helpful? And do you have some advice for books that I can add to my reading list that you have found to be helpful in terms of either long-term memory or any other aspect of leading a healthy life as we get a little bit older? I'll look forward to hearing from you in the comments and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.